So second gen Cummins, this is how you do the WT ground wire mod simplified. I took the PCM out, blah, 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 whatever. So you take your battery ground off and you kind of unsnake your wire. And this splice is what you need to worry about. This basically runs all the way over the front of your engine by your injection pump. And it goes like right here after you take everything apart. What you do is you cut the wire at the splice if you watch uh, Mopar Man 1973 or whatever. And you, these four wires you actually ground to the case of your injection pump with a bolt. But also the alternator wire snakes across the front of the engine. As you can see, it goes all the way up. Sorry, I got lost here. So yeah, this little guy kind of snakes back under here and comes in to here. So you undo this, because look, this actually goes to your battery positive. So why would you want all that? Just delete this completely and run it to that auxiliary battery over there. Battery positive to simplify the power circuit. And this is a relay. It's 140 amps, so you actually don't need that. I'm just going to use the circuit breaker instead of a relay so you can get it back home. And then if it charges too high, it'll pop it. So you can reconnect it factory style, but it's a lot easier to do it the other way. So then uh, basically what you want to do is get that and undo it and then snake it back over this way. So I'm going to do that. All right, so once you get the alternator, alternator cable, it's just long, so off you can run it to this passenger side battery positive but once you cut the splice for the ground for the common ground or whatever um see how it has a connector here which is fine because that goes to the harness and what you want to do is cut this splice off and what we're going to actually do is reconnect it on the ground terminal here and then go to the case where these guys are. So I got the alternator wire on the battery lug, goes down and straight to the alternator. And I was tracing this ground out of the PCM harness, and look at this. You follow this, Chrysler electrical engineers are idiots. They triple common ground splice to this. I mean, like, why would you do that on a PCM? It's like, dude. So, uh, that goes to this connector. This is my apps ground. I'm just gonna run these directly to the battery ground because I'm tired of having all these issues. So yeah, we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna stop in corner right now because I gotta get some parts and wait for the PCM to get fixed by a computer company. I'm gonna replace the battery terminals on the side also because that one is ugly. So, basically, what I'm going to do when I come back is just uh, unwire this dude and then uh, just hard connect it and solder it, as well as put in inline protection fuse for, I think it's this blue, one of these wires on the alternator, I can't remember. Whatever one goes to the PCM, I think it's, I think it's this blue one. Right here. Oh um, my! I got a seven and a half in, seven and a half amp in line fuse for that. So we'll do that. Um. Yeah, reconnect some grounds. As you can see, there's a bad ground that broke right there. You know that kind of stuff. Um. I have this PCM VP44 and whatever common ground soldered and I just need to get a bolt to fit into the VP44 case and then wire it to this. I'm also going to replace this terminal ground because it is bad and nasty. Uh, I got to figure out what to do with these. So I don't want to pay all kinds of money but we'll just uh, try and get away with what we can get away with here. So, But yeah, thanks for watching. Alright, so once you get it all wired up nice with loom and everything like I did here, go kind of over this bracket like here and then under. You reuse the factory brackets when you loom it, like so, so it's up out of the way from the fan. 
and back down there. Then move on to connecting the wire to the injection pump, the ground, and then ground to the pass or the driver's side battery. All right, so as you can see with my little uh, halfway ghetto rat's nest, took the blue wire from this third connector, solid blue, and cut and crimped it. Kind of looks, you know, whatever, but I think it'll work, so. Kind of leave it like that, I guess. Not too much binding on it, but, uh, so it's a few circuit now, so now it won't be damaged by the whole thing there. It protects the uh, PCM from alternator charge circuit voltage. So basically put the PCM back in, <sighs> ground your little ground here from the harness, ground your engine ground or the negative, and then obviously over there. So we're going to do that with all this stuff down here. Alright, so after replacing some terminals, here with the ground and then obviously the circuit here, the fuse circuit to the PCM. I was like sweating so bad, I was like so scared. That's, don't mind that, that's ghetto, ghetto negative. It's red, but I painted it black with the Sharpie, so it's negative, whatever. Grounded it, grounded it, oh man. So you come here and you go in here and I just had to I was just like freaking out man I didn't know what to do I was like please help me no and then I just had the key in the on position and literally like that it came back I think it just had to communicate and the gauge works the fuel gauge works the battery look at the battery voltage works the cluster works Watch you start it. Everything works. The voltage, the oil pressure, the fuel. No check engine light, no CAN bus signal. The heads up display works like E. Just freaking insane, man. Thank you, Auto Computer Solutions, for making an amazing module. I have an ABS light on, but I don't really care. I'll look at that. It's probably a fuse or something. I don't really, I'm not worried about it. Just, it works. Look at it. Works. Yay!